Welcome back to this Let's Play of The Last Remnant. Last time we actually completed Emmy's little side quest, and uh, well, we spent quite a few episodes doing it. But that got us one on one of more of our sort of terminal characters we will use to the end of the game. Uh, I'll call him Meister, just you know, because it amuses me to do so. Because um, I'm not sure if it's Jagger. I mean, I could call him Mick. That might be funny too. But I'll call him Meister. He just doesn't have the lips to be a Mick, even if he's Jagger. But you know, Jagger. We have one more character to recruit, and I may go through the process of recruiting one other character, though I may do some of that off-screen, because that one requires some fairly tedious work, actually. Uh, and he's not a character I'm going to use to the end of the game, so I'm not real thrilled about it, but I might do it anyways. But, uh, we have one more character that's an endgame character. Well, probably an endgame character. I might decide to pitch him in the end. I haven't decided. I haven't really nailed down 100% my final formations yet. And it's really just a question of how many mystic people I want and how many um, of the uh, just sort of direct attacker people I want. Uh, we have a couple of people sitting around here we can talk to uh, for parameter bonuses. And uh, Jorgen, I don't I think we still have to talk to him a couple more times. There's another quest available here, too. This is Zolian, but um, he's, you know, busy. And he's not going to talk to us. Anyway, here is uh, Child Molester Paris, uh underage girlfriend, and apparently she's involved with the royalty of Balterosa, and obviously he is uh, involved with the uh, royalty of Ryosha, and apparently someone's uh, starting a war. So, the... Uh, she wants you to find a way to stop it. I guess this, you know, puts a whole Romeo and Juliet thing on there, but... Yeah, that relationship's just a little creepy anyways, so... Once you accept the, the sort of quest from her, you uh, have to come here to... Uh, Ryosha and... Uh, the quest is actually given by Duke Priam. And, uh, he more or less implies something's going down in Lava Thunder, so let's head back there. someone's using their relationship to try and start a war. And it's not them. You have a guest union. Um, the underage girlfriend does not join the fight, but Paris does. So. I mean, maybe it's a cultural thing, but uh, it's just kind of... Anyway, we've got... Uh, Quite a few groups here, so um, we essentially have two options. We can try and do this like the Nest of Eagles battle, where we're uh, you now it's going to force us. To... Oh, never mind. I thought it was going to force the the left hand group there to uh, go after the enemies way out on the, the right. There's way out on the left, but there's no, there's no attack option. You generally don't want to split up your unions far away from each other. If you can keep them together, do so. Sometimes, sometimes you kind of get forced into splitting things up, but it's not Not surprisingly, that wasn't it. <laughs> the 
this fight is different. You, you have a choice of going to Balterosa first or going to Royal Shield first. And this fight is different depending on which one you go to. I think it's actually easier to do Royal Shield first. They don't really hint at it. I guess I shouldn't have bothered to uh, hunt that Jana group while I was doing uh, Emmy's quest because I don't know if enough of them here. I forgot about these guys. Come on. Meister here is a very powerful physical attacker, but uh, not a particularly effective, um, well, on anything else, but really. he eventually gets traps. But for the most part, he just hits, he hits stuff very hard at this point, which is nice, uh, but he's not a real sub -effect. He will eventually get a couple of other important abilities, which is why I recruit him. If he were just stats, I really wouldn't bother too much. I think there's only one character just based on the basis of stats alone. And even him is not really, it's arguably not just stats because he has uh, some uh, he has some unique abilities. I mean they're just damage dealing abilities, but they are. For the most part, the characters I've chosen, I've chosen because they have either a uh, healing skill or a, uh, or a reviving skill. Only one of our groups is anywhere near the guy we actually want to fight. I'm just going to focus all fire on this godwood here. Unfortunately, I gave orders to heal, and since they're healing, sometimes they uh, kind of make up their own mind on what they want to do. And in this case, it's just a lot of stuff with these uh, raptors. Hmm. Well, I guess Rush's group is kind of stuck fighting that other guy. That's sort of annoying. Come on. I 
I'm pretty sure that uh, your battle rank increases are based on um, the enemies you kill, not the enemies you fight. So if you don't actually kill them, maybe that jump. I'm probably the best of a bit. You really increasing battle rank does not do very much for me. I guess it'll have um Paulson will learn revenues sort of based on that. Uh, which I guess is, you know, that's not laughable. It's uh, not however super important. He needs to get started on it. This ability here that uh, Paris is using in Maledict is one of the few basic attack spells in the uh, Slyonics arsenal. In the 360 version, Paris used invocations, sorry, invocations. And uh, he was okay, but for a character you can do that way, like, you really wasn't that, that good. Um, in this version, he has Psionics, which is a much rarer ability. Sweet! Only in death. A new power! Yes, I'm not seen out quite that yet! That means nothing to me. Yes. I have received my heart's desire. Alright. And. I guess that's the upgrade for his weapon. But this. Second fight's gonna take too long to finish fit all in one episode, so we are uh, gonna have to continue on in the next episode.